All right, as you can see, this is the 2018 Physics C E&M exam. Uh, this is available on the College Board website, and I'll, I'll, link, I'll, I'll link that page in the notes so that you can access this if you want to without just having to see me work on it. So right now, we're just going to go through question one. The best way to use this video is to try to work out the question on your own first. Uh, and then watch watch the solutions to the video. If you if you just try to watch the solutions, you might get something out of it. It's better than nothing. But uh, checking your work against what I do will by far be the best thing. So, with question one, we have this solid sphere of radius A. That's the inner sphere right there. Um, and conducting shell of inner, a, inner radius B and outer radius C are shown. Um, the shell has an unknown charge, so we don't know what's going on there. The plastic sphere has this charge uh, distribution, rho is a function of R, given. Uh, and we want to express our answers in terms of all those things that they gave us. So we're going to consider a Gaussian sphere, radius R, concentric with the plastic spheres. Derive an expression for the charge enclosed in the following regions. So uh, for part one, R less than A, what we're going to do is, is put our Gaussian sphere here. Uh, now, what that leaves me with the charge enclosed by that Gaussian sphere, since I've got that charge distribution as a function of R, it's going to be rho times dV, and we're going to integrate from zero, the very center of that thing, all the way out to R, because we're talking about R less than A. Uh, so it's important that our, our limits start at zero and go to R. For the next one, in, in, in that area in between the shell and the inner sphere, the limits for my integration are going to be from 0 to A, because that's where my charge distribution stops. But for now, uh, rho dv. Now, for a sphere, uh, dv for a sphere is the surface area of a sphere, 4 pi r squared dr. Um, the, the way that we're going to get any differential uh, volume element is taking the surface area and multiplying it by a differential thickness. In this case, it's going to be dr. So to find q enclosed, we've got the integral from 0 to r of beta r times 4 pi r squared dr. And we're integrating that from 0 to r. Everything else comes out of that. So q enclosed is... Um, 4 pi beta on the integral from 0 to r of r cubed dr. When we take that integral, that gives me r to the fourth over 4. So my enclosed charge in that region for number 1, q enclosed when r is less than a, ends up being uh, pi beta r to the fourth. So that's the answer to a number one. For part two, that's the region in between. So our Gaussian surface is going to go here in between our shells. The, the only charge we're enclosing is the entire plastic sphere. So for that part, it's the, it's the same integral, but for here, that's part one. So for part two, Q enclosed is going to be the integral from uh, 0 to A, because that's where my charge distribution stops. It stops at the radius of the sphere uh, of the same thing, beta R times 4 pi R squared dr. So since the only thing that's changing uh, is the limits, I'm going to have pi beta times A to the fourth for my answer there. So that's part A. That's the first part. Uh, as far as the rubric was concerned, this was worth three points. Sorry if that w went off the page a little bit. And this was worth just one point because it was just a change to the limits. So, part B, use Gauss's law to determine an expression for the electric field in those same regions. Uh, so we'll continue with uh, R is less than A right here. If we're going to use Gauss's law, we need to write it down. So... Um, the closed integral of e dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. For a sphere, this is always going to reduce to E times uh, 4 pi R squared, and that's equal to Q enclosed, which we just found, pi times beta times R to the fourth over epsilon naught. And we're going to solve that for the electric field. So my, my pi can go away. 
two of the R's can go away. Uh, and my electric field comes out to be beta R squared over four epsilon naught. Just from plugging everything in. That's for R is less than A. For the in-between space, we're going to use this same Q enclosed. So E dot DA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. But because we're talking about a different region, that side stays the same. But my Q enclosed this time needs to be pi times beta times A to the fourth over epsilon naught. So my electric field in this case is going to be beta a to the fourth over four, I'm sorry, not four pi, I apologize for that, over four epsilon naught uh, r squared. That would be the electric field in that region in between. Then for part C, uh, at any point outside of the conducting shell, it is observed that the magnitude of the electric field is zero. Determine the charge on the inter inner surface of the conducting shell. All right, so because it's a conducting shell, I'm going to go. I'm going to go back up to the top just a little bit to look at it. So for this conducting shell, if you erase those lines right here, uh, because of the way conductors work, if I put a charge of let's say positive Q here. Because this is a conducting shell, I will always get negative Q to be induced on that inner surface. It's going to be the exact same charge, uh, but negative. Same magnitude, just distributed over that surface. So, uh, what I know from what we just found is that the enclosed charge here is, is positive pi beta a to the fourth. So if I want to know what's on that inner surface, it's going to be the same magnitude charge, but negative. So on that inner surface, um, the magnitude of my charge on the inner surface is going to be negative beta pi a to the fourth, right? It's the same size charge, it just happens to be negative right there. And our justification is that that conductor is going to induce the same thing there. The charge on the outer surface of the conducting shell has got to be zero. Uh, and, and the reason is any Gaussian surface on the outside there is only going to enclose zero charge because it told me the electric field was zero. Um, the total Q enclosed outside must be zero because uh, the electric field for that region outside is equal to zero. And since the sphere on the inside gives me positive beta I, beta pi to the fourth, beta pi a to the fourth, and then the inner surface gives me negative beta pi a to the fourth, uh, my Q enclosed with just those will always be zero. I don't need to add any additional charge on, on the surface of the thing. All right, on the axes below, sketch the electric field as a function of R from the center of the sphere, and then sketch the graph for the range R equals zero at the center to R equals C at the outside of the conducting shell. So, a couple of things. I, I, I like breaking these up into regions uh, and looking at what we know the electric field to be in those regions. Now, uh, between B and C, this is inside of a conductor. And I know that inside of any conductor, the electric field is going to be zero. So I know from B to C, my electric field is zero right there. And I found the electric field in each of these regions, right? So the electric field up top, um, inside of the thing, we said was beta R squared over four epsilon naught. So, so this is going to be quadratic, and it's going to increase like... Uh, x squared. And then in this region, it was beta a to the fourth over four epsilon naught r squared. So that's going to decrease like one over r squared. Uh, 
then we get to the surface and it drops down to zero. So there's going to be some discontinuity there, uh, and that's what we're seeing. Last little bit. The figure shows some points on the sphere and shell labeled as such, and we want to rank those points according to their electric potential. So I, I know that out here the electric field is equal to zero. In here the electric field is equal to zero. Uh, and then I have my functions for the electric field uh, in the region in between. It's going to be uh, beta a to the fourth over four epsilon naught r squared. And then on the inside here, it's going to be beta r squared over beta r squared over four epsilon naught. So the potential is going to be the integral, the negative integral, from infinity to whatever point we're talking about of the electric field with respect to R. What that means is we're adding up all the work that we do as we move in from infinity to any given point. Now since the electric field out here is zero, it takes no work to move a charge to the surface. And since the electric field is zero inside of that conductor, it takes no work there. So that's telling me that Y and Z have a potential of zero, and they're both the same. So one is the largest potential. These are going to be the least. Now, once we move inside of here, and we're dealing with this electric field, as we move in, our work is increasing. Uh, so X is going to be greater than Y and Z. And then as we move inside of the spherical shell, we're still gaining... Uh, we still have an electric field that's increasing, so we're doing even more work there. So W is going to have the largest electric potential because it takes the most work per unit charge to get to W. Uh, then we have X that's next because we had to do work against the electric field in the middle region. Uh, and then we have Y and Z. All right, that's this problem. We're going to do another video for question two.